Hi, back to the tracker. Got some goodies in here, I just said. This is a capacitor discharge ignition system. Dart sale, 10 bucks, or flea market, something like that. Here we go. I'm gonna try to get that for you. you see it. It's like the tiger, like the tiger by the tail or tiger in a tank thing. Okay, that thing you got a bypass, which is the change back. It's made for a point system, really. So the opening of the points triggers your coil. Geo tracker. This is our, I guess, the transistor thing. The orange leg puts out a negative pulse, no, a positive pulse to charge the coil. So the negative on that orange wire triggers a spark. But this transistor then pulls down on the brown wire, which runs down to this cool wire here. And this is the, the hot. Okay, which was this, I cut it loose, this here wire back here. This is powering the red on the ignition. You can shut it off and it shorts the red back out to this white, which is where it was originally. Okay. I can't do it though because now I have this thing off and I got another thing in. It's also what it does when you turn that switch off, it takes the coil wire. So I'm running the pulse out of the electer from the coil. Or you know inside the distributor here, this green wire I put in. Can't even see it here now. I should be making contact. That runs inside, and I'll show you that box. Okay, this is a kit I made at least a year ago. I uh, can't remember who makes it now. But, uh, ignition signal in here. My yellow wire here. And it puts out, uh, out of the chip, it puts out a positive going pulse. It's inverted by this transistor, so it's a negative going pulse simulating points. So that's ideal for that box. Then you look at this thing, which is here. J car, that's what makes it. Silicon chip. This thing you program, uh, you have a map of 15 RPMs and 15 vacuum points. So the 15 by 15, pretty big map. And you can program the advance point at each of those map points. And uh, once you play with it enough, it should be perfect. But uh, there's a vacuum leg. That's one of the uh, options. A vacuum transducer made by Honeywell. So I got a T, which I just bought here from AutoZone. On that, I'm gonna put in the vacuum line. I don't know, I guess, for the uh, map sensor, and uh, then this thing should work. If that black wire, the power wire, will supply all this. I don't know how much that thing. I know this don't draw hardly anything, but I don't know what the, uh, the ignition box out there that CDI draws. That's got that's got two big TO3 case transistors, in it. <coughs> and it's got to be grounded. That's the ground, so in this thing you've got red, which is the power for the thing. Uh, white, which is, I guess, is end up being power for the coil. I don't know if that's going to be 300 volts. The black, which I didn't hook up yet. i got to put the resistors in series with it. I guess that's where it's supposed to go. To uh, this brown wire here. As long as this transistor is off, I can hook it to that. Uh, that might just be an SCR trigger. And uh, green, which is the uh, signal in, which triggers that noise that would go to your points. So this should work nice. I'll find out how it works. Okay, I put a... There's a hundred in it. hundred ohm. If this, is, if this is 300 volts, that should make enough of a current to at least get spark. I don't know if this coil itself can handle the CDI, but that should make it run cool. It should be enough to have spark. 
it's on. This I'm just using the side. I want to keep it so it doesn't run at all. I can back out and get back to the standard ignition again. Then I'll leave the vacuum off for the time being. This way it'll be in the retarded map, which uh, it shouldn't be too advanced because right now it's zero. If this works, my, uh, if the polarity is correct, it should it should run. I think. Let's see. Again, this is just an experiment. Hit the control, put the key in, turn it on. You should see light out of that. It's lit. Let's see what happens. Nothing. Now, I guess next thing to see if we got spark at all with like a timing light or something. Okay, got an authentic old uh, Sears inductive timing light. Coming around negative wire there. It works. Let's try it out. Right. No spark. I don't know if you can see as many better than I can. Down there, uh, is black goes to the points or green? Black? Coil. And green is distributed, so green is a pulse in. Okay, I'm going to try grounding this out with just a key on and see if it gives me spark. Okay, funny thing, without the resistor in series, uh, I shorted it out and the engine was turning. <laughs> it actually bumped the motor. So I must have had a good enough mixture in the cylinders. To fire it off, so that this box works. I, mean, I hear the inductors, I can hear the inverter running. Okay, I just check the, the coil, the distributor wire. This this thing draws like a half an amp. So my transistor, my box isn't deep enough. I'm gonna have to use a FET, an FET, or something. And uh, that that this should work. I guess I don't need a hundred ohm. I heard, it was kind of half-assed making a spark, but not very lively. But this is working. It's a little warm too already. Okay, so I gotta modify my box a little bit. Okay, here's what I did here. At first, I thought I had no ground black wire, but it is grounded out there. Uh, this is my key wire for the, uh, the ignition system, the capacitor discharge ignition. There was a 1K resistor, I think, or 100 ohm resistor in series with that. That thing draws 300 milliamps somewhere in a straight. This is the transistor. Can't handle it. I'll put a fed in it, but this this might work. We'll see. Okay, if it starts. It starts. Nothing. Okay, let's check see if we have spark. Okay, this green wire is disconnected again <laughs> from yesterday. You know, it's, it's, it's a constant thing. You can't work on it all the time. You're always turning it off and back onto it. Try it again. Timing that out again, I guess. Okay, first I first want to show you this. I don't think I showed you this yesterday. This is my quill wire. Now it's not working. What's going on? Something loose? There you go. Pretty extreme, huh? I don't know if it's uh, my breaker open. Okay, looking at the scope, my trigger voltage on pin 6 is only like a volt. I put a voltage divider in there because I thought that reluctor out there puts out 0 to 12. It's only like 0 to 5. So I'm going to cut that resistor out. I stuck on the bottom, I think. Okay, I cut my resistor out. I had a resistor on the bottom. By sealing it, I feel like a very stiff wire. It doesn't feel like it's ready to break. Now let's see what happens. Ooh! It's, uh... Picking. That means it's too advanced. Okay, what I did is I just inverted the input to see if that makes a difference. Maybe it's, I mean, I'd be way the hell off. But I might do that. Ooh, I think it's gonna run now. Let me advance it again a little bit. Three, one. This must be right polarity, because now it's doing something. It a little bit. 
It's a couple of degrees at a time. It's fussy, ain't it? Hi, I um, had a problem with my capacitor discharge ignition. I ended up, uh, I guess the only thing's wrong with it that was the SCR. The SCR was triggering itself very rapidly after a few seconds of, of hitting ignition. So, uh, in the process of testing that, I burned the darn transistors up. And I changed the transistors to another type because they're old germanium PNP TO3 case transistors. And uh, I found some new old stock germanium PNP, not the same thing, they worked. I'm going to try when the weather isn't so crappy. I mean, it's warm, but it's nasty. Uh, put that back in and see how it works. The SCR I put in there was a higher current trigger and a lower resistance. So I had to change a 33 ohm resistor to a 10. And it triggers on about 5, 6 volts, which is perfect. Here's my vacuum line. There's no vacuum over here. I'm gonna go over to here's my vacuum T here. So I'm just gonna tap into the side here. Over there someplace. I wonder if I can use the yeah. So I guess I should really use the I guess I could tap into that. The uh right there, that's where's my zoom? I have zoom on this right? Yeah. That's my map sensor. Still, I, don't, I guess it's not using that anymore. Except maybe shifting. No oh, wait, shifting's all all mechanical and tranny on this. But it does use the engine. The computer does use the pulses to keep the f injector running. So need that. Okay, it's the old map sensor. Map sensor, right? Yeah. I think that thing's a filter. I tap the T right in there. Alright, so let's go into that thing. I don't know why I shut this off, but the, there's green wire here. I put this cap in here because uh, there's no filter caps on the power supply in this box. Black is ground and so is the case. Green is the pulse out. White is the... No, I'm sorry, green is the pulse in going into the box. White is a pulse out, which is going through the resistor. It has to go through the resistor. So don't put that inside. And the red is the power. The power I got from the coil where it was, if I disconnected from the coil, now the coil power is grand. I think it should be swapped. And uh, pulse in from that box, J car. Uh, the negative is going to the coil, so the actually the only ground source is. Screw. And uh, that's it. That's everything, right? And uh, the plastic tube I just ran up the can and fine. Here it is. Vacuum feed into the uh, half center there. And it was. Isn't that, isn't that something else? This is something I bought, bought and built. I built this kit, this J car kit, ages ago. I think I was going to put it in the van. RPMs? Let's demo. How the RPMs climb? There's 15 RPMs and 15 loads. There's load two, or RPM two. See how the timing is just advanced. Why didn't you set that timing there? Okay, I'm advancing four. Doesn't like that too much. It's going to be difficult to set this up. I guess four, either loaded or unloaded. It's probably a good spot. If I load it up and it starts pinging, I can retard it some more. Let's see, instantly the RPMs, oh, the load changed. Let's see, it went from load to four, six to five, my step on.
Let's rev it up a little bit. Okay, that's RPM fog. Advance a little bit. There we go. Three thousand. I can manually, with the engine go off as long as the key's on, adjust these. It's like, right, right, let me see, that's, that's negative four, that probably zero's okay there. And I can go one by one also with this. That seems pretty good there. That's definitely too retarded there. I see it. So the load range goes from you let up on it goes up four. So when you let up on it, you see the vacuum go to four. Let's walk. It's getting hot here. Now is it okay for that thing to run? I guess it is. Grab the fan. Now we can go. I think I have to go around again. Let's go. Cool. View. Now here we go, load 14. Load 13. So the white changes the load. The black changes the RPM. So let me go, if, if, if zero is four, let me go three. Oh, negative three. Negative three. I think it's probably not enough. Uh, there's three. I say negative one. I think that's and there was near enough advance yet. Four. Get a positive one just to create some kind of advance curve. Five. Give it two. Six. Four. Seven. What it did before, I think. 10. This is just RPM under heavy load. Load 13. 12 might be too much. I don't think go to RPM 10. I don't know what that is. I think this thing rev limit like, rev limit like 5,000 RPMs now. I ain't running that high. Oh, I just had 20, 20 degrees advance at 11. 2 at 12, 13, 14. So I guess it did have around 15. Okay. So I can do the whole 15 times 15 points if I wanted to by the keypad in view mode. 